how are you ever, as a professional scientist, going to get you know, hundreds or thousands of records of where a particular species is found if you don't crowdsource that data collection effort through citizen science. And that's what we're doing with iNaturalist. And again, we wouldn't be able to have those observations. We wouldn't even be able to answer these questions if we weren't using citizen science. I'm Greg Pauley, and I'm the curator of herpetology here at the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles County. Uh, and I'm also the co-director of our Urban Nature Research Center. The Urban Nature Research Center is a group of curators, scientists, and educators that all work together to um, promote some of our urban nature initiatives, many of which involve citizen science. And, and the basic goal is to get a better understanding of urban biodiversity and eventually to understand factors that structure urban biodiversity. Before we started using iNaturalist, we had a project here called Lost Lizards of Los Angeles. And the acronym for that was LOLA. And with LOLA, we received over a, like a four or five year period, we received about 350 observations. And of course now, that I'm very active with iNaturalist, you know, we might get 350 observations in an April weekend, you know, for reptiles and amphibians in Southern California. But working on that Lola project made me realize the incredible power of this approach, particularly in urban areas. And of those 300 and some odd observations, we had several new county records. All of introduced species, these were actually all introduced geckos that had never previously been documented in this region. And so I'd already recognized that that using photo-based citizen science was going to be a really important tool. Um, and then at the same time, I f moved here to Los Angeles to take this position, and I was out on a jog, and I saw a um, uh, Southern California legless lizard crossing the street in North Hollywood. So this is like absolute, you know, stereotypical suburban neighborhood, just houses, you know, north, south, east, west streets for as far as you could see. And here's a legless lizard crossing a completely urban street. But what I realized is, you know, is this somebody's escaped pet or are these actually managing to make it right here? You know, is the soil here sandy enough that this species is making it? How are we ever going to be able to answer that question unless we have people out doing lots of surveys? And even if you had professional biologists out doing surveys, I mean, what are you going to do? Walk sidewalks? How are you ever going to get the animals that are you know, in somebody's backyard, underneath a pot, in their mulch pile, et cetera. How are you ever going to document that? And so from those two experiences, from discovering these new species with our previous citizen science project and from my own observations, I knew once I sort of figured out what iNaturalist was about, I knew that this was going to be a really powerful tool. Even then at the time, though, I would say that this is sort of one of the tools in our toolkit for studying urban biodiversity. And now I don't even sort of say that. Now I just say, like, this is the tool for doing urban biodiversity research, at least from my perspective of somebody who's studying things that people can easily photograph. Um, it's, this is the way we get our data. And I think in the best scenarios, in the best projects, it's generating data that allows us to answer questions that otherwise we wouldn't ever be able to answer. So alligator lizard mating behavior is a great example. So I started up the Rascals Project, and in 2015, what I realized is that in sort of late March and early April, about a third of our observations of alligator lizards, southern alligator lizards, were species that were in mating holds. And that's where the male bites the female on the back of her head or sort of the upper part of her neck. And they may stay in this position for an extended period of time, some cases over a day. Uh, and this is sort of their courtship, and eventually they may mate. Um, and we were getting large numbers of these observations. And so what I realized is that when we think about sort of citizen science, amongst the many things that iNaturalists in these photo-based citizen science projects can do is not only document where things are found, you know, across a spatial landscape, but they can also document interesting behaviors. And so I realized that we could sort of expand this and promote this and suddenly get a much better idea of um, when these species, when, when alligator lizards, for example, are breeding. But then you can ask questions like, okay, well, given things like urban heat island effects, do urban lizards breed earlier than rural lizards, right? If temperature is important and when they breed, that might be the case. Or, you know, what's the latitudinal gradient in the timing of breeding? What's the, what's the year to year gradient? How much is weather determining when these guys breed? So you can actually learn, you know, a whole lot about the biology of these animals as long as you can get enough observations. And the incredible thing is that in the entirety of the scientific record, there are three dates of when alligator lizards have been observed breeding, just three dates in the peer-reviewed scientific literature. As of yesterday morning, we're at 144 observations accumulated over just a little over two years of promoting this via citizen science. So, 
you know, the real story here isn't that we're studying alligator lizard mating behavior. We are doing that, but I think the really crucial part of the story is it demonstrates that citizen science is really this, you know, revolutionary tool for studying animal behavior. Because suddenly you can get huge numbers of observations of these incredibly rare events. It is still the case that I have never seen alligator lizards breeding, and yet I have the largest data set of alligator lizard breeding behavior. Still never seen it though myself.